Hello and welcome to the very first Blender Pro video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you an introduction to what Blender Pro is and also explain my development plans for the 2.8 release. So to start out, Blender Pro is an application template. That's goal is to improve the interface and usability of Blender. I want this to not only make the software easier to learn for new users, but also make it more efficient for advanced users. As I go through this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the differences between the standard version of Blender and this application template. And I'll do this by showing you how the interface is currently laid out and explaining some of the new functionality and tools that provide a streamlined workflow to create any type of scene. This application template is currently compatible with 2.79, but once development gets further along, I'll be creating a version that's compatible with 2.8 that takes advantage of all of the new incredible features that are coming. So if you want to try this out, this is free and open source. The download is available on blenderpro3d.com and the source code is hosted on GitHub. So feel free to check it out, learn from it, make it your own, do what you want with it. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So after you install the template, you'll have a new dropdown located on the splash screen. This will allow you to switch over to this new template. And the first thing that you're going to notice is that there are only two spaces that are displayed by default. We have the main info header at the top and the 3D viewport. Now, as you can see, the 3D viewport takes up almost the entire interface. And this is because the 3D viewport is one of the most important spaces. And in 2.8, this is getting a major upgrade with features like EV custom manipulators, and a newer version of OpenGL, Blender's viewport is going to be amazing. So displaying as much of it as possible is ideal. If you haven't seen any of the EV demos, I really recommend checking them out. This is one of my favorites. And as you can see, the viewport is rendered in real time, allowing you to see changes you make right away. This is going to be a game changer for how artists work with Blender. But again, this is coming to 2.8, so not quite available yet, but definitely something to be looking forward to. So if we take a look at the 3D view header, not much has changed here, but there are a few things to point out. First, in the view menu, I've included a viewport options dialog. This displays all of the common viewport settings. These settings were typically displayed on the panel that's docked on the right side of the interface. And by moving them to this dialog box, it not only frees up space where we can put other helpful properties, but still gives a quick way to access the viewport settings. Another area where I used a dialog box is in the render settings. So rather than having those properties always displayed, I just moved the common ones that are accessed on a somewhat regular basis to this dialog. Now, the last thing that I want to point out about the 3D view header is I've included a tools menu, which displays all of the operators that are available for your given mode or context. By default in 2.79, a lot of these were displayed on the tool shelf, but I prefer including them in a menu because it not only displays a list of all of the available commands, but also their associated hotkey as well. And since it's very common for a majority of the commands to be accessed through hotkeys, this menu serves more as a lookup. And by moving all the tools, this frees up the tool shelf on the left. So now you'll notice in the tool shelf, we're displaying information that we would typically find in the outliner and property space. And so here in the scenes tab, we can see a list of all of the scenes. We can add in new ones. We can see properties about our active scene, and then we can also delete them as well. Here in the Worlds tab, we have similar information where we can see a list of all of the world environments. We can add in a new one, and based on what we're trying to do, we have different options. So if we want to create one from an HDR, we can select this option here, browse to where we have our HDRs downloaded, select one, and then click Create New World from HDR. You can see that adds one to our list here and also displays various properties about it here. And so if we wanted to show it in the viewport, we can click this option which then displays our HDR in our 3D viewport here. And maybe at this point, I'll go ahead and turn off my grid floor really quick. But you'll notice there's other settings. So here we can adjust the strength of our HDR. We can adjust the rotation of this as well. And if we need to make any advanced modifications to this, we can just open up the note editor right from here. And so that displays the note editor where we can make any modification we want to about this environment. Next, the Layers tab displays a list of all of the view layers that we can work with. Here in the Objects tab, we can not only add in 
all of our primitive type objects. So we can add in a cube if we wanted to. And we'll delete that for right now. But we can also access a library of different objects. So here I have different backdrops that I've saved to my library. I've got different base mesh objects that I can use as a starting point. I've got different nature assets here that I can add. And I think I got most of these from the Cosmos Laundromat open movie. And basically just opened up that file and saved them right to this list. So if we want to add an item from our library, we just select it here and then click OK. You'll notice that puts us in a placement mode to where now we can place this exactly where we want by just left clicking. And so here, let's go ahead and add in a few more. Let's add in maybe this crazy looking tree here. Go and click OK. And then here we can just place that right in our viewport as well. And then let's go ahead and add in a couple other objects. Maybe we'll put in one of these rocks here. And let's go ahead and just place it somewhere right about there. And let's put in one more. So here we'll go and select one of these and click OK and then just left click. And so you can see as we're adding these objects to our viewport here, it's also building this list of all of the objects that we currently have in our view. Here, if we go to the groups tab, we have similar information to where we can create a group from our active selection, or we can add a group in from our library. And so here, let's go ahead and go to our bushes library, and let's just add in one of these. So if we Click OK. That again puts us into a placement mode where we can just determine where we want this group placed. So if we just left click, that adds that right in. And you can see here that it not only adds in the group to this list, but it also displays all of the objects that are in that group as well. And then finally here, if we go to the Materials tab, here we can see a list of all the materials that have been added to our environment. Again, we can create a new material and we have a couple different options. If we wanted to create a material from an image or a new principled material, we can just add them right from here or again, just access our library of different materials. And so here I've downloaded textures from Polygon and here I can just browse all of the materials that I saved right from my library. And so here, if I select on one of these materials, I can click OK, which then puts us into a paint mode. So now I can determine what object I want to assign this to. And so here, if I left click on my ground plane, you can see that there are a couple different material slots assigned to that. So I have the material for the dirt and ground, and I have the material for the grass. And so here I can just click assign for the dirt and ground, which is then going to change out the material that's used for our ground plane here. And so here at this point, let's go and just render this really quick just so we can kind of see where we're at. So that started the render process here. Maybe I'll actually also quickly switch over to my GPU. And that will at least render the image quite a bit faster here. So now if we want to adjust properties of this, we can access the properties on the right hand side. And so we can either click this plus button here, or we can type N on our keyboard. And that will show us all of the properties here for right now. Let's go ahead and switch out of rendered view. And so you'll notice here, this shows us the main properties that we have. So we have the dimension properties, location, rotation. We can also see properties about the mesh objects. So the uh, texture maps, vertex groups, things like that. Here we can also access properties about the materials. And so we can see the material slots and materials that we've added there. If we needed to, we can always open up the material editor right from here just to make any quick adjustments to the material. Here we have a list of all of the modifiers and here we have a collapse all button as well just to kind of quickly show all of the modifiers that are currently added to this object. And one thing that you'll notice is that I have not only all of the standard modifiers included like a subsurf modifier, but I also have all of the particles and the physics modifiers as well. And so here if we open up the modifier that we have for the grass particles, here we can just make some quick adjustments to this right from here and displaying all of the particle systems in the same modifier stack just makes it you know a lot easier to know where to access different properties another thing that i've changed here if we take a look at this displacement modifier we'll notice that it's using a texture in order to displace this mesh and here we're using a clouds texture and typically in the standard version of blender you would have to bounce back and forth between the texture tab and the modifiers in order to adjust all of the information about this one 
modifier. And so displaying the textures, you know, wherever they're used makes it a little bit easier to work with. Now, before I move on, I want to point out a couple things that are currently not working or a couple things that I'm still just working on within this application template. The first is in the materials tab, you'll notice that this preview doesn't update when I change this. So you can see if I wanted to see the preview for the ground, it's still displaying the grass. And so right now I have to manually move this to update that preview. And so in 2.8, we're hoping to get a better callback in order for this um, interface to be updated. And another issue is here, if we look at the objects tab where we can display a list of all the objects, this works well for small scenes, but when we have larger scenes with lots of different nested hierarchies, then this is a little bit difficult to work with. And so we're hoping to have a new control or maybe some additional functionality added to these UI lists that will allow us to display nested hierarchies and structures. But for now, if you need to work with that information, you can always just switch over to the properties tab up at the top here. And that displays, you know, our standard outliner that we would typically work with. And then also all of the advanced properties. And so if we need to display the actual previews for here, we can always just bounce between the properties interface and then the 3D viewport. So everything that I've talked about so far is all about the user interface, but there's another area that in a lot of ways is more important, and that is usability. Now I plan on creating several videos on this topic, but just to give you an idea of what I mean, let's talk about how objects are added to the 3D environment. In the standard version of Blender, if you want to add a plane, you click the Add Plane button, and then it adds the plane. Then you have to spend time moving, resizing, and rotating the object to be positioned exactly where you want. But what if there is a different command called Draw Plane, which allows you to pick points to determine how the object is going to be placed? In a lot of ways, this makes for a much more intuitive and faster workflow. And the same could be said about a command called Draw Cube. Basically, you can pick two points to define the width and the length, and then the third point would define the height. Or what if we think about something a little bit more complex, like adding particle systems? Here in this scene, I've sculpted a ground plane. I've added in some assets from my library to place rocks and trees, while also adding in objects with particle systems already applied. So I created these objects in a separate file with all of the particle settings dialed in just the way I want. And now I can use them in any scene that I would like. So with those appended, I can use a command called draw particles, which would allow us to select one of the particles. And then we can use the weight paint functionality to quickly draw them onto the object. And this isn't some complicated feature. It just automates a lot of the tasks that take time when applying particles. Typically, you would have to append the particle settings, add the vertex group to your object, add the particle system modifier, assign the particle settings to the modifier, assign the vertex group to the setting. And it's not like all these steps are complex, but they're time consuming. And creating features like these allow artists to focus on the creative aspects of Blender, not the tedious tasks, which allow you to create your designs easier and faster. So that's all I really wanted to cover in this video. I'll be releasing more information about Blender Pro and the upcoming 2.8 release soon. But this template is just the start. I plan on making several other templates that focus on creating something specific, like a template used to create architectural designs or a template that simplifies video editing. Now, there's all sorts of ideas that I have, but before I start creating these specialized templates, I want to focus on creating a new baseline or a starting point that the rest of the templates can be built on top of. And that's the whole purpose of Blender Pro. So if this is something that interests you, feel free to subscribe to this channel for future updates. But for now, I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.